What's good? What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel, man. Self Made Life TV. You already know. Go follow the IG, man. It's your boy, Self Made Life Ken. But um, we gotta get into this, man. Um, my bad. I know I ain't. You know what I'm saying? Posting no content from the fight. I will probably upload my um. I'm just gonna do a prediction to each fight. I will just do a recap to each fight because I did catch the undercard. But look, we're gonna cut straight into it, man. Um. And before I even start, I'm going to say salute both fighters. Special salute to Deontay Wilder. Even though I'm not a fan of your skill like that, I'm a fan of you. And I'm more of a fan after that fight. And shout out Tyson Fury. I've already been a big fan. You already know. Come back. But look, man. This is for the Deontay Wilder fans, man. Um, y'all got to get this smoke, man. We dealt with y'all. We dealt with y'all for what? We dealt with y'all for like two years since the second fight. Really, I don't know. Really, it's been three years because the first fight, it was cool. Before the first fight, y'all was cool. I was a Wilder fan myself. You know, I wasn't a fanatic, but yeah, I was a Wilder fan. He was undefeated with power. Boom. Wilder get the fight with Fury. I'm like, okay. I already was a fan of Fury because I seen what he did to Klitschko. Wilder, you know, uh, since Fury left, Wilder been doing this thing for as keeping the hype but you know with aj and a couple others so when that matchup first got announced and fury was still on his comeback so it was interesting but man ever since that fight got called a draw almost two maybe three years ago deontay waters fans has been a thorn in boxing side ever since man and to be honest they don't realize that all this bull they doing especially with the internet now and you see before the internet it'd be cool we really wouldn't have to hear this maybe we would hear it every blue moon on the tv or something but with the internet you know if you into boxing content you can't really watch no content without seeing the damn crying you know a couple channels have moved on but for the majority you know them them them, them channels they 20 30 deep so your whole timeline is filled up with the shit. but look i digress man um, listen, y'all. Is reality not reality? Like, I swear, I'm trying to watch some of y'all videos. And it's just like, y'all live in like Pluto, but Pluto is in, in rewind and the shit like four centuries ago. It's just like, y'all not at the current time and date everybody else is at. Look, man, it's over, okay? I don't know, you know, I'm sorry I had to be the one to break the news to y'all. It's over. And I'm not saying it's over for Wilder. I'm just saying the Tyson Fury new Wilder fight is over. The, the, the trilogy, the whole little situation is over, all right? Nobody want to see a four fight. Um, we about to go down some of the lists of some of the, the crazy shit y'all saying, man. I'm just, because, you know, I wasn't even going to do a video on it, but it's just getting obnoxious. So, this this is the main narrative I'm hearing now. The narrative they're running with now is that they just wanted a clean fight. Even um, they said Tay Jones, Wilder Cap said, we just want a clean fight. Bruh, it's the third fight of the trilogy, and you talking about a clean fight. You done fought this man twice already. So, obviously, it's, it's some cap. For this man to be such a cheater, for him to be this, for him to be dirty, when well, you fight this man three times, you know what I'm saying? So we can just nip that excuse in the bud. You know what I'm saying? Because they saying now that, well, since it's conspiracies on May end, key word, it's not, it's not conspiracies in the boxing world. Most of the boxing world understands what took place Saturday night. But, you know, with, with them, it's conspiracy on May end, so therefore the third fight went clean. Now, next point. We're just going to go through them all. And shout out H Money, man. I'll be cooking on there sometimes. So if you mess with H Money late night, you'll, you'll catch me on there. But we're going to go through the list, man. I got time today. Boom. Next issue. Let's quit all this. We got to be honest. Let's quit all this um, 
it was a war. It was the greatest fight ever. You know, at first, in the moment, a couple hours, I was like, man, you know what? This might be one of the greatest heavyweight fights. But when you really break it down, no, it wasn't, man. It was a one-sided beatdown. All three fights was damn near, besides the first fight. The last two were definitely beatdowns. The first fight was a boxing match because Fury stayed on the back foot and Wilder can fight better on the outside. So the first fight wasn't a beatdown, but this, the last two was a beatdown. So we really just watched like, what, 26 rounds of a nigga in his ass whip. There's not no war. There's not no uh, Gotti war. This ain't no back and forth. It wasn't no both ends. No, it was, it was one ended beatdown. We're just gonna keep it a buck, man. You know, I think at any time, if you're a fan of Wilder or just a fan of the sport, it's time to be honest with him because his health was on the line. So this is not the time for conspiracies. This is not the time for none of that. You know, he took a lot of punishment. And like I said, I do want to see Wilder fight. It's some fights for Wilder. But if he's not about to play no defense, I'm not about to watch no more of his fights. You know, almost got to the point, like I said, I was a big fan of A.B., but once A.B. stopped letting his hands go, you know, it became hard for me to come up with reasons that he was losing. It was obvious he won't let his hands go. And I think it's getting kind of obvious with Wilder that he has to learn how to actually box. As far as just with his stance, just everything, man. It's a, like I said, it's a lot of small errors Wilder do wrong. So if he's not going to really learn how to box, I don't think we really want to see him take that punishment like that. But let's move on. Um... The glove conspiracy. I'm not even going to get into that. I think uh, if you ain't seen it, go to Tay Jones page. He dropped the video. That kind of explains itself, man. The commissioner. Shout out that commissioner. I don't know who he is. It sounded like a young cat, but the commissioner was, they weren't playing no games. It sounded like they heard a lot of the stuff that was said prior to the fight. And the commissioner, to me, the commissioner kind of put him in his place. Tay Jones tried. I give you your credit. You tried, bro. You know, riding for your mans, but. Commission basically, uh, the, the the commission eventually um, shut down the glove theory, and he told Tay Jones that um, one nothing that Team Wilder was gonna be able to do to get the glove changed. It was already approved, so I ain't even about to go down that rabbit hole. But that's another excuse we can cross out. I think we had three. All right, boom. Um, I just seen the video. Um, and, and shout out Drew Titan too. You know, um, I give him credit for him. Out of all the Wilder stands I've seen, he kept it. He been keeping it a hundred. You know, he kind of went a little far left in this um this last video I seen about the long count. But I watched his reaction video. He did a reaction video with the Wilder hater, and for him to be a Wilder fan, he was being honest in that video. The first part I seen, so shout out him. But um, yeah, continue on. Um, yeah, the long count. Come on, we gotta stop this nonsense, man. Because at the end of the day, the goal is we want Deontay Wilder to improve. And just like in in real life, you know, wherever we got flaws in real life, you can't hide from your flaws. That's one thing I learned about life. Wherever you got a flaw at or wherever, you know, it's an area that you um not giving it the proper attention. When, that, when it comes time to perform or just when it comes time to put up or shut up, you're going to get exposed. That's just how life is. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about life. That's why it's like up to you how I go because whether or not, you know, when that time comes for that event, you don't have to put up or shut up. So us lying to water is not good. And it goes back to the long count. Um, you know, watching the fight, I didn't really notice the count watching it initially. Because it was caught up in the moment. But um i seen a couple of videos. Yeah, the count kind of been a little long, but I think like once again, people don't know the rules. Just go look up the rule book, and it kind of makes sense. It's, a, um, it's not a 10-second count. It's not basketball. It's not football. It's not no other sport where we got shot clock and history playing and all that. Boxing is still old school. It's the ref's 10 count. So it's not a clock 10 count. It's not an official 10 count. It's the ref's 10 count. And then y'all got to think, too. The 10 count will never be, no matter what fight, no knockdown in history, it's not going to be a 10 second because it starts on the ref. And we know the ref moving his hand and move the shoulder count. So at the end of the day, a clock and, and, and just time in general moves faster than humans. So regardless, I think we, we never will get an actual 10 count. I think every fighter gets 12 to 15 seconds on the knockdown. You know, some people say Wilder got the same time. So I think, yeah, most fighters get that time. 
that that depth fear we got on the knockdown just because as a ref, you're not a clock. He's a ref. He's a human. So whenever he started his clock, uh, count, that's when he started his count. Bottom line, you know, um, and uh, one thing Wilder fans got to realize, too, is that Wilder needs to start walking to the corner when he gets his knockdowns. I think both times he got his knockdowns in these fights, he started that running around the ring or walking around the ring. No, nah, Wilder, as soon as you get your knockouts, bro, bag up to that corner. Because if, if Wilder would have backed up to that corner, to me, he probably would have won the fight. Because think about it. The ref, the only reason the ref stopped counting was to tell Wilder to go to his corner. That's two, three seconds right like there. If the ref don't got to do that, he continues his count. You know? And Fury probably would have got up at a close nine. But he still probably wouldn't have been able to. Because when the ref had to tell Wilder to go to his corner, that even gave Fury a little more time. So, you know, um, the long count, like I said, that's another, that's another excuse, man. Um, I'm trying to think anymore. Okay, yeah, this is another one, too, I wanted to hit on. See, it's a, it's, it's a lot. Like, the last couple of days, everybody been cooking, so. This the last one, too, but um, this the next year. The only reason Wilder got beat because Fury was 277 to a No, man, it's a, obviously a skill. You know, Wilder got, Wilder got power that can uh, beat any man, you know, really, no matter the size. So I don't think it's the fact that Wilder, uh, if, that's the, if, if, if Fury size, listen, the only way I can believe Fury size played a big factor is if Wilder couldn't knock him down. Wilder knocked him down for what, three times, four times. Matter of fact, yeah, four times in three fights. So uh, Fury couldn't have been that big if Wilder was able to drop him not once, not twice, but four times. It was just a lack of skill and strategy to me. And I think we really need to question how hard did Wilder work in camp? He had two years and his guys think to be that, that, that below average. That just don't make sense to me. You know, I know he got a life. He do got a family and stuff, so I get it. But still, it's like I, that's what kind of disappointed me. I was more disappointed. I'm not really mad at Water, man. At the end of the day, it ain't that deep. It's a boxing match. It's a sport. You know, we move on the next day, get up, go to work. But the only thing I would say disappointed me was that Wilder's gas tank was horrible. Even with the knockdown, I get it. But it just felt like he was huffing and puffing from the third. And we're talking about a heavy huff. You know, maybe he – uh. That first round, we all love it. Maybe he outworked us, but even still, you should be able to have a. Come on, now it, it's like if we see it, uh, Usyk, and I know Usyk smaller, but still, if one man can't, we we didn't see fighters with high activity. So that one round, a high activity shouldn't have um, took out that much energy from Wilder. So um, I think it's not really Fury's weight because. He, Wilder fought him three times. He fought him twice after the first time. So whatever weight or height adjustments should have been made, it don't take seven fights to make weight and height adjustments against your opponent. Wilder knew what it was. To me, he should have came in 210 and just bounced around in there. Wilder is not, I don't know why they kept bulking him up. He was never a bulky type of guy. His advantage was he was an athletic big man with, with a devastating, uh, you know, pistol-like uh, right hand. So. His best bet to me was, as you've seen in the first fight, even on the second knockdown in that first fight, he got the one-two off. I think he hit him with the straight and came back with that left hook. Caught him twice. So it just felt like after he put on the pounds both fights, he was never uh, as mobile. And to me, mobile mobile was the answer. See, when it comes to boxing, it's, it's like a cause and effect. So, boom, Fury chose to go power. Wilder should, Wilder should have went speed. Wilder chose to try to fight power with power, and if you're going to fight power with power, the bigger man going to win. He, you know, Fury chose speed the first fight versus uh, Wilder's power. It was a draw. Second fight, Fury came in with the power. Instead of Wilder going speed, he kept the power strategy, and he's not the bigger man. So that's really what happened. But, um, yeah, as far as that, um, it wasn't just Fury weight. That was the problem. And, you know, and now they're saying that no man beats Wilder because – um, besides Fury, and I'm like, that's not true. If you kind of know boxing, to me, anybody can beat Wilder at this point. Because one, we just don't know where he's at mentally. Two, he took a lot of damage in the last two fights, especially that third one. And as we've seen with AJ, even Andy Ruiz, especially in the heavyweight division, you take a tough loss, especially if you've been knocked down, it, it lingers. So we just don't know what condition 
Wilder's in after the last two fights. And uh, thirdly, I got to see Wilder improve boxing before I before I start really picking him over. Of course, I pick him over most of the C class, but when it comes to the B and A class, I, I it's gonna be hard for you to really find somebody that, like I said, A or B class fighter in the heavyweight division that Wilder can beat. Just because I think everybody outboxes him right now, you know. Um, until like we see more of the Wilder in the Stern two or Stern first fight, and he was kind of boxing a little bit more. I think from from my eyes, that's the last fight I remember him actually boxing. Until I see a more active Wilder, I think anyone beats him because the blueprint out. You know, um, that's why Floyd was really big on his undefeated because that kind of put a when you when you fighting an undefeated fighter or when you're an undefeated fighter, it's just a whole different morale. It's a whole different aura. And now it's a it's not it's a really a three three fight blueprint on how to beat Wilder. So you know now Wilder is going to have to overcome that because people going to have a game plan for Wilder now. So it's going to be interesting to see can Wilder stop their game plan while also implementing his own game plan because now you know the, the secret is out to me against Wilder. I think if you can if you can um you know don't be scared to, to walk in the fire. And get your shots off because the way Wilder plays defense right now, he's not really like he don't like I say he ain't even just put up a high guard. So you can you can get up in there and go to work. Now I know Fury had the lift, but I think just off of speed, you know everybody is saying uh, everybody's saying Wilder knocks out Andy Ruiz easy, and I just don't see it, man. Andy been in the fire with AJ, took some shots from AJ, exchange with AJ, and to me AJ is a better exchanger than Wilder. See, Wilder, people, a lot of Wilder fans think that all his punches are powerful. No, it's that it's that, that, that right straight that's powerful. And once he set it up, it's powerful. But and, and I know Wilder got a nice left hook, but besides that, you know, when he goes, besides that, it's not like all Wilder shots are these are just powerful shots. So, you know, if you're a fighter and you're fighting Wilder, you can – Either if you can take the right hand or if you can just get hit and hit Wilder before he hits you, you know, you got a chance. So that's how I see that. But um, I ain't going to be too long, man. I just had to drop this real quick because I was just, it's just too much. It's too much nonsense going on, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back to the boxing content. It's just a lot of, a lot of BS in the way. But uh, yeah, man, comment, let me know how y'all feel, man. I'm gone.